I'd like to call the meeting to order. And I also would like to announce um, the use of the audio video recording of this meeting. And we are, will not be able to approve the minutes of June 18th, so we will do that at our September meeting. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Carol Reinhardt um, from the Human Rights Commission for being here again. And it's really enjoyable having you here, Carol. And Sarah, it's a pleasure having you here Thank again you. and it's seeing you smile all the time. So <laughs> anyways, I know you have a lot on your agenda to talk about. So Carol or Sarah, either one of you can start first, please. Well, I want to especially appreciate And Sarah you know our counselors. Coming. Yes, we, we both, I think, know all three of them. You know Counselor Casey from Ward yep. 7, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And why don't we thank... Mary Likens. Mary Likens, who's recording for Adam, Adam Cohen. Cohen. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're saying we were so busy, and the first statement to make is we've been doing less than usual because our numbers have been down. So, uh, right. in other oh, words, the number of commissioners that we've had, we've been really uh, not at full capacity until just now. I was going so, to say because I know we interviewed several. You worked several hard, of them. yeah, uh, and thank you for that. Um, this is always a moving matter. So I really, um, I, again, I want to say how much I appreciate Sarah's coming. I'm running at sort of half mass with the last end of what apparently is a flu going around, so I'm a little on the saggy side here, and I know Sarah can add a lot of information and more energy than I'll have tonight, but. What I did was just put together the material that you see there. It's a report, probably, the, uh, this kind of covers November to July. It was last November that we submitted a, a, a fuller report after maybe about a year and a half. Um, so the, we wanted to cover the fact that we had the Human Rights Day luncheon in, in December of 2011 thought you might be interested in just a review of the kinds of organizations. This is not a complete list, but the organizations who came and our goal at that time was to, um, to really provide a forum for people to talk to each other as well as to have people have a broader understanding of both what the Human Rights Commission can do and how we serve it. And we see ourselves, I guess, as a sort of hub and that we're, we're the hub and we can't do it, uh, but we can link to people as we do do it. And um, the turnout, I thought, was marvelous. Yeah, we had about 35 people, 30 people. That's excellent. Uh, and, and people were, uh, people made connections, people knew each other, but they also made new connections. We had really a, a wonderful um, day. And I thought you might be interested in just seeing at least a couple of outcomes that uh, have were there adding Rick Hart specifically to uh, apply, causing him to apply to be on the commission. And then I see in my notes that I made a week ago, I said informational presentations from, but didn't complete the sentence. We've had um, uh, Mike Nagy on our agenda to come. He, he turned out to be ill in our last meeting, so we're hoping to have him to talk about the disabilities. And we had, um, Another one of the agencies, it's one of the agencies that often comes to ask for um, the block grant. The um, CDBG grant. For a youth agency, and she came and made a presentation and then came to the, talk about the block grants about two weeks later. What's that, so community action? It's community action. Oh, great. So um, at least those, and we have maintained a connection, a, a better connection, I think, with the housing agencies in the city. Um, and some of our folks went to a, um, a meeting that they had last week, which was a kind of a, um, a group interview that they were trying to find what the issues are in the city. And Emily um, um, Audrey's attended that meeting. So we're sending representatives out. What else? And I was just going to say, I think one of the best things about this luncheon was that most people don't know the Human Rights Commission exists. Exactly. And you know, we keep talking about how can we, and we were talking about going and speaking at faith-based institutions and doing all that, and I said, why don't we do something to invite people to us? And I think people really got a sense of the work we did. 
and there was a lot of networking going on between organizations as well. So there was, when we opened the floor to suggestions on what issues we ought to be concerned about, there was a lot of discussion about health care and, and making it available and people representing different aspects of that, as well as housing. So people were able to find out what each other does as well. So I thought that was useful. I think when the meeting was over, we were all kind of like, okay, we don't want to set up false expectations for people either of what we can do. So we spent a couple of meetings kind of narrowing down our focus and, and how we were going to, but we thought it was really important to also follow up. And I think we sent something out to everybody, didn't we, like the minutes? And, and the minutes were, you did a big job of the minutes when you sent them out. Please. Can you, the, you said the number of commissioners are down. We, are, we have were. nine. They were. We were yeah. operating much of this year with more like six. We had Rather than that nine, you have, you, have, you have places for nine commissioners. That's right. right. And so, how is it that you get down to six? Is, there just, is, is it hard to attract people? Um, there was a time, I think, when I was here at our last meeting to talk about this, we uh, I was encouraging Mm -hmm. the I remember that. Yeah, that's what, that, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to pull this all back together. Yeah. Here. And uh, so there, are, we would try to be sure people knew, and be sure people knew to invite people that they knew to apply. Mm -hmm. I also think there was a period of time, kind of between mayors, when there was a lag in timing. Yeah. But uh, that that was really the Rick Hart waited for. Months. In fact, if you'll see the. the the last, the other side of the page, who our people are now. Rick had started attending meetings in March, and he finally was appointed in May. And that's just because that was a transition <coughs> time of, uh, of what we were doing to get, get the appointments through. And Georgiana started in April, appointed in May. B.J. Prajad appointed in May, and has yet to attend a meeting. So. Yeah. We, I wonder if she's been if um, been sworn in yet. No, VJ VJ is in India right now. Oh, so okay. He's, he's um, I've tried to communicate with him several times. That's He'll be why. Back next week. He's he's uh, he's actually been I I got a finally got a communication from him because I'm trying to organize something else with him yeah. and and, it, and he's out of Wi-Fi range and cell phone range and okay. other ranges. So. So he did indicate he plans to come in July to our meeting. So hopefully he'll be. And, and we lost a number of long-standing members who'd been on the commission for a long, long time, time and decided it was time to step off. And then one person moved out of the area. Mm -hmm. So we lost, I think, a fair number of people in a, a brief right. period of time. Yeah. I know the ones that we just interviewed were just unbelievable. <clears throat> I mean, they just told us exactly what they felt what they wanted to do to really get out there and let people know what the Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. was all about. We were really impressed with the background. Yeah. I'm interested in what VJ has in mind since he hasn't communicated with me at all or with the committee. Do you have oh, a sense sounds of like what he's he would He's a do? social justice advocate and um, teaches at Trinity. Um, I've spoke, in fact, I use him as when I'm on a radio show, he's the Middle Eastern expert right, on, right, on, right, uh, right. I'm aware on of uh, things like the Egyptian, uh, the Arab Spring and things. Yeah. But he's he's very much a social justice activist here in the United States with kind of a, with, a, with a national reputation. Uh -huh. uh, and he, it was a question I would imagine more of acting locally. It's the yeah, acting yeah, locally yeah. piece that I would think that that's what he would be he's interested a, in if he's, he's looking I for I think a, he's like on that. the board of American Friends, um, I believe. Uh, along with um, um, Ms. Rogers, they're, they're both uh, uh, been active in that group. So, yeah. And beyond that, I don't know. We didn't never discuss. Right. I never discussed. I actually Local was surprised roles. to see that he was applying for yeah. HRC. That's and a, I was, that I was, interested me too. I was pleased to see that. Wonderful work. Maybe yeah. maybe kind of talk him into it. Yeah. I, did, I well, I would love to take credit for it, but I actually never talked to him about it, and only found out about it when well, he came up we'll on the agenda. We'll see how we can capture his energy for local action. So, a little bit. So, just to get back a little bit, it says I see it's filled at last. Yes, all slots true. are filled at last. Mm -hmm. Did you have 
very few applicants, or did you have a lot of applicants that just weren't? What Not you, that. Uh, no. You know, very few applicants. We basically it, take everybody, almost. Yeah, almost. It just seems like it's such a worthy... It, I, I couldn't understand it when you said you were having trouble last time getting... Because I'm, so I, I, I've been stewing on that for about a month now, thinking about it. And um, It's a very... You know, it's, 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 it's a, um, a generous commitment. Yeah. Uh, the monthly meetings, and, and people do work between meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, uh, so it's it's it, and attendance is you know usually can just stretch to a quorum. Yeah. Um, at that and so I you know at one point we considered asking to put a, a, re, a request in to increase the number of slots because we could do more if we had more slots. Yeah. But we have had more time spent on keeping on keeping on until we at least had the nine. So I think, you know, I, again, as you're involved with your constituents, I think it would be really wonderful to have. And we, we are certainly seeing ourselves as representing the entire city. You know, so we're not simply, we don't wish to be known as uh, the social justice agency that American Friends Service Committee is. Mm -hmm. We've got one of those. Yeah, they don't have a political agenda. They don't have But a that's good though, because yeah, some people yeah. don't like that. That's so right, and I think well, ours is a city function. As mm -hmm. we see yeah. it. Uh, Do you have any associate members? Well, uh, which, no, which we could have be an two idea. advisory. Yeah. We have the advisory, and I see Heather's name fell off the list. Heather Johnson is still, uh, along with Marjorie Hess, on yeah. the advisory yeah. committee. Yeah. Um, and um, we don't have associate members. We, uh, there was some feeling that maybe the someone as young as Emily Odrich should be considered an associate member. She's a war horse. She's, she's oh, unbelievable. She she's Absolutely. amazing. She's far from your typical teenager. Yeah. Um, and uh, we she have, gets that from her mother. Uh, Trust me. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell her father you said that. Yeah, you go. <laughs> I've already told him that. <laughs> but, you know, so um, I, I'm always interested in thinking about, I wonder if there is a high school student. I wonder if Smith has people who would be interested, as well as the people that you that you know in your constituency. Yeah. We've spent well, lots of meetings trying to generate names. I think part of it is... People are so busy. They and they are. That's a big problem. And, and one, of, one of my frustrations, and I'm hoping now that we've got all these new people, is, you know, in the past we've done more programs for the community. And when you don't have enough people, I mean, it takes a lot of energy to plan, like the Human Rights Luncheon and, and other things that we've done. And I think we'd like to do more of that. But we really, we don't need just members, but we need members who are willing to do more than Mm -hmm. to right. yeah. so part, of, part of the like historical the... frustration that's been with the, with the Human Rights Commission is one, it's it's the scope and breadth of what, what it is you're being asked to do, and on the other hand, not empowered to do all that much. You're, as you pointed out, you're a clearinghouse or ombudsman right. persons. Right. Right. I'm not I'm sure I got the plural in there somewhere, but the and and so as you said, the the, the value of the luncheon was to uh, you found was the uh, networking that came as a result. And, and a number of social service agencies, of course, try to have network amongst themselves. Um, Carol dis did discovered this with us, uh, that there are, are some redundant services that um, all vying for the same amount of money, working with the, same, right. with the same ambitions and hopes. And there's some frustrations that come as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this, you know, this would be, come under the rubric of being uh, the HRC, but I like the idea of you guys being an aggregate point, a congregation point, where where people can exchange ideas and programs and plus, as you said, increase awareness of what the mission is of the HRC. Mm -hmm. And and, and I, I think, to be honest, uh, the resolutions help, too. Yeah. The resolutions actually point out to people that there is a there is a city commission that's, yeah. that's comprised of citizens generating resolutions for the council to vote on, on what, but again, resolutions have no authority beyond saying this is what we resolve right. to do. But it does provide an educational opportunity. Right, oh, and yes, I think that's what it does. does. Yeah. I mean, you guys are an educational entity, more or less. And, and I've learned that I'm surprised 
by the white leg one with those complaints and we write to MK, the employers. Yeah. We do have this moral authority that right. people, I guess because we're part of the city government, that people listen to us. And, mm -hmm. um, well, the imprimatur of being that. And then, then plus you can refer, That's you can refer That's complaints right. to MCAT. Right. And uh, I mean, you're not completely toothless, but the, the fact is I know that from past commissioners, there's some frustration that was born of the one was there's no staffing, there's no, right. so that all the work that gets done is done on the volunteer basis. Yeah, and, and, and we have no budget. Like we had right, big, no budget. Bang just and borrow just that. to have this luncheon. And right. I personally would love to do a second luncheon, you know, make we it an actually, annual event, but it's like, we really could use <laughs> a small budget. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be really budget. Cool. Well, they don't have a budget because they, they don't have the means to do fundraising. Well, you do actually, technically, the Youth Commission, for instance, generates fundraising, but you guys aren't likely to throw a concert necessarily to generate money. Right. But I see actually Good. developing or what we're discussing Good. is Good is an alliance with the Youth Commission that would also uh, generate some interest oh, with, yeah. and, and very similar committees, I mean, and the Youth Commission is literally casting around trying to find projects and things to participate in, and I keep trying that to steer them one. towards... Uh, the HRC, well, and if we be. make a more formal arrangement, they, these guys, they have a surplus of, of sorts. They have actually have a war chest you know, of money that they really. from an art show co, that they did. Co-sponsor something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they yeah, love to meeting. they love to yeah. make money for projects like this. So they just develop. They they donated a, a, a I, I can't remember what the amount was, but a substantial sum to uh, uh, um, the NEF and and they um, and and also promoting arts programming in the public schools and part of the challenges with the youth commission is similar to what you were described is the spectrum is not all that broad of the participants the participants tend to be very good students who are doing extracurricular activity focused at the high school but this is a youth commission that's established for the full breadth of, of political persuasions and circumstances throughout the community. So everything that we can do, I mean, I actually was pitching woo to Emily before she went, she went to, the, to the Human Rights Commission. I was asking her to get involved in the, the youth, youth commission, commission. but uh, clearly, I mean, uh, I think you guys are benefiting enormously oh, from her presence. But I think that's a natural alliance and an affiliation that would benefit both. Well, and, and especially because a lot of what we do is through the lens of human rights and mm -hmm. the Declaration of Human Rights. It would be really nice to, they might want to work with us on a Human Rights Day event and, and it gives us a chance to do some education right. and maybe help them do some of their work through that lens as well. Mm -hmm. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm the council liaison for the Youth Commission. It's not meeting this summer, right. so when they come back, right. When the swallows come back from Capistrano. Yeah, maybe we what, could have a joint meeting. Yeah, I'd exactly. love that. That'd be great. What about national priorities also? I mean, that's that's big. And NPP is a national priorities project, you know. But the, right, right. But they're huge. I don't remember. remember that we did. Yeah, yeah maybe we have the environment. You should yeah. really yeah. involve them. Also, I'm yeah, on the advisory yeah. committee um, for the district attorney's office and under civil rights, and it wouldn't hurt to get a hold of Mary Carey at Dave Sullivan's office right. and talk to her because they probably could step in and do some educational programs. It's interesting that she did come to that meeting, yeah, and did. we talked about doing something. And yeah. in fact, I was quite uh, pleased that David Sullivan said that he had kind of taken a look at human rights commissions and from his scan of websites, that and saw what we were doing, that we were really outstandingly mm -hmm. performing. I think you should get a hold of her because I, I think that would be an excellent connection along with what Bill wants to do and combine groups. Yeah, she was planning to establish a group in November. I don't know whether that's ever happened or not. I don't know. You should get yeah, a hold check of in with her. I, I spoke with Dave Sullivan here in the parking lot about the, the, the Human Rights mm -hmm. Commission. In, um, he was strapped for funds, you know, was always uh, struggling for mm -hmm. money. But as far as the teeth part, the public goes, by the nature of the Human Rights Commission. Oh my God, those are teeth right there. That's the moral authority that we really are aware of. They really are teeth. And I think people are really, really starting to pay attention. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to think of who else. When you guys were, were 
developed it was it Michael Bardsley. Yes, he, he, Michael Bardsley, Mark yes. Carmine, um, uh, Elizabeth Silver created, uh, developed the resolution to establish uh, the Human Rights Commission, which was originally actually was supposed to be projected to be staffed, and uh, there, there just wasn't the money for it, but to, to have a dedicated it. staff system. Well, we voted on it. We voted on it. We on voted on it on our first term. Yes. Yep. And um, um, so what year was that? 96, uh, 95? I don't remember. It was mid-90s, somewhere yeah. in that yeah. point, yeah. Yeah, and I do want to say that Corinne Philippides has right. been great about being a, a staff to us to the extent that yeah. she's able to do that. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's extra on her. Yeah. I think the direction that Bill's talking about is really a great idea and him getting involved with the Youth Commission, and I think you get hold of Mary Carey, national priorities. I mean, Bill, you go to their function, they have it up a log cabin. I mean, it's huge, huge. And they have a new director now. Too. Right. But you, you guys were saying you, you want to expand your um, involvement beyond the, the usual suspects of social service agencies. Yeah, and we, we have, you know, of our group, we have, um, we have some, a good range of voices, um, but we don't have, you know, we don't have the widest of ranges. I think, you know, there are, well, churches are oh, obviously one of the first places to go. We have some clergy right. on our people right. who are, yeah. And, and, but I would even say uh, the Elks, uh, which Council of the Barge is associated with, um, these are, you know, or, or veterans programs or veterans well, that's agencies. One group I was saying. Steve well, Connor. we did do that, remember? We did with the, the veterans. The, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those I don't know whether there's that was anybody who's awesome. let's say, people, drop, that people kind of dropped out of it. So that was, right. I mean, it's it, great I mean, while it was happening. Remember the one we put on with the Well, you throw oh, what's up right. against the wall and see what sticks, but I mean, Steve Connor. Yes, it's probably that's a great conduit, but it's principally good for it's veterans at risk right. who are uh, uh, at risk of being that's homeless, who I might, there might be substance about. abuse. The soldier he was on, at our lunch yes, he was. And the soldier on group in the yeah. it, up in Leeds, yeah. um, they're helping a lot of veterans with with substance abuse issues and trauma issues, um, who clearly would experience uh, human rights challenges. Uh, and you, 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 Mike Nagy, you talked with the, from the Disabilities Committee. There's right. a, a, right. um, but I, I, I think that, so. Right beyond going beyond the the central social services and, and politically active groups, are the one there are other groups and organizations in the community that maybe might not find anything that 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 basically would work. But at, at the on the other hand, I mean, I clearly. It's better to have a kumbaya kind yeah. of arrangement with, with, with every agency across the board uh, and program. That's a lot of heavy lifting on your part. I mean, to do the outreach, that's the tricky part. You know what I'll do, Carol? I have um, John Downing's number from the VA hospital for soldiers on. I'll email that to okay. you. And Bill is correct. I think it's time again, even with social services and veterans affairs, that we do like we did last time right. at the World War II Club, and, and Councilor Dwight is correct as far as we have many veterans at risk now mm -hmm. that are coming in, both men and women. And I think Soldiers On would be a starting point along with Steve Connors, who's our veterans agent, mm -hmm. and also the World War II Club. Then you have, um, Riverside. Um, the Legion. The Legion. Oh, the Legion. The Legion. 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 Right. So many. Riverside Drive. Right. Yeah. And the VFW. And we have that dialogue group, too, um, that was it's going time to do it again. Year where we had some of the mothers of yeah. uh, veteran, and right. veterans, mothers of deployed right. soldiers, and some of us mm -hmm. would have these ongoing dialogue meetings. So. He was in Barbara Golden at one point. Uh, a member yes, she wasn't show. a member of it, but I know. Barbara. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, Barbara. Yeah, clearly that's a good connection. Karen Bird. Yep, Karen, Karen was a member. She's a yeah, resident yeah. on my ward, and she had mm -hmm. both. And 
what's your name? The person that spoke at the World War II Club on the panel mm -hmm. had a heart attack Sharon. during a mm -hmm. presentation. Well, yeah, I'm not Sharon? Sure. No, it wasn't no, Sharon. Kath, it was Sharon. Was it Kathleen? And then a person who was the former city councilor from um, Ward 3, the person that resigned. Oh, um, oh, oh Angela oh. Plasma. Angela yeah. was part of that group, too. Well, it's, yeah, well, so we're just making lot work for you. Yeah, but just right. let us well, know, Carol. And the other I'll thing is here. that if you, you know, it takes some months to plan something with right. the staffing and the energy and the organizing, but if there are issues that are coming to you from social services and veterans affairs that you think you ought to have a community conversation, I mean, it's really the way we've gotten into the community conversations is by way of the resolutions, which is one of the main values, I think, of right. the resolutions, yeah. is that it, that really does create conversations. Um, when we had the, the resolution on Citizens United, mm -hmm. uh, Ryan O'Donnell uh, worked with us on that, and, and he said, well, the next best thing is that we get a unanimous agreement. I said, excuse me, and he said, well, a unanimous agreement is best, but the next best thing, you know, in a sense is, if, if otherwise, we don't have time, we don't have discussion, we don't have a dialogue about it, so um, it's always interesting, isn't it, that the, the dialogue is something that when we are, are of so nearly like minds, it's, uh, we don't even educate ourselves. Right? Well, that's so the, the, by my reckoning, I disagree with Ryan on this, I think resolutions actually should be contested and discussed. I, I think I think the value of the the resolutions, the primary value is the discussion that goes along with yeah. it. Yeah, and so all the discussion was public comment and comments by, you know, by the people on commissioners. Well, you know, the it's the same thing with the right to organize resolutions. Well, that's right. Didn't even make right. the papers. Right. We yeah. probably worked it over in a And I think the other group, piece of these resolutions is what kind of follow-up do you do afterwards? Like with the right to organize, we need to let all the employers in town know that this passed. We need to let all the union members know that this passed. Um, so there's... I think, that, yeah, I mean, to that extent, at least for the union resolution, that people like John Weidman and Kitty Callahan will probably, right. probably be pretty <coughs> instrumental in, in disseminating the information. But uh, the Citizens United, um, we were intent on establishing that. That was before I got elected, was to even talk about it Previously in workshops and things like that, yeah. we did some of that, but 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 you're right. By the time it Taking came here, there was just a sort of uni universal <coughs> contempt for the decision. So it, well, it, that's right. it's so it's a, it's a <laughs> little tricky. I mean, it's hard to queue up. But there's so it. many people who don't even know what Citizens United right. is, or the ramifications. No, but they have to be educated. Right. That's the whole yeah. ball game. And that, the that, that, that gets back to that's committee. like you know it would be great for the Human Rights Commission to put on some right. kind of an educational program, but it's, we need the members on our committee of active people would be willing to put together something like that. So maybe working with something like the Youth Commission or, really or, or, or National Priorities or, or other, we, we, I think we need to do more collaborating. Right. Requires I think Carol enormous amount of energy in this. I mean, yeah. so it, it, the, dialogue goes, the dialogue goes on, and we discuss that at a, at a meeting, or we, we talk about it, and then, uh, you go away, and then what has happened? You know, and so it kind of like before you even get out of here tonight, Marianne Labarge is going to set you up for the next time you're coming back. You know, but that's the way she does it. That's the way she and it, does it. Well, it keeps everything. It just keeps it moving. It is very difficult because how many people do you know of in the city that don't even know what the hell is going on in the city council that you talk to? They really don't have a clue. Well, most people. Don't. So it requires an enormous amount, and I, I, I give you guys all the kudos in the world for, for staying on it. You have to, but it's continuous. It takes. It's a huge commitment, and it just. It, I just. I can't thank you enough for doing it. I mean, it. Uh, it's really something. It, it, it's huge, and what I know that when you guys leave here, it doesn't end. I know that you're out. You're working. You're, you're working at it, and um, it just. Uh, it, it, it's. It's a commitment. Yeah. It's a commitment. It's, and it's, it's a labor of love, and um, and what else is it but human rights? I mean, what more is there? Carol, I'm not sure about Steve Connor's schedule at all, but if I can get a hold of him, where you and I do you work during the day? Not in the summer. Okay. 
just to sit down with him and go over some of your concerns and say to him, this is what we want to do. What can you do for us? How can you help us? What kind of a platform can we do? I would like to see something held like we did last time at the World War II Club, which brought in many, many veterans. Yeah. yeah you know? That was the Veterans Education Project was really involved. It was excellent. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think the other... You're, you're, you're going to be around for the summer, right? Yeah, I work half-time, but I have some days too. So. Okay. What is better like? Wednesdays and Fridays. <coughs> what, in the mornings? or um, free during flexible Wednesdays and Fridays all day. I'm uh, You're going generally free, but I'm gone for, for a little while in, uh, in a week and a half. So. Yeah, in the summer, it'll be a busy time, too. Uh, first week of August. We've just gone through six days. So. Okay. Sarah, you were saying something. I, th I think the other piece, and we, we often feel a little schizoid because the other part of, of what we're charged with is hearing complaints. And that really, I think we should talk about that for right. a couple Thank minutes because yeah. that's the most challenging piece of what we do. Um, first, just letting people in the community know that they have the right to make a complaint if they feel their rights are violated. Again, if, if the professionals in this community don't know we exist, then certainly even though we put articles in the paper and op-eds, I think that, that and, we, and we have brochures that we put in relevant places, most vulnerable people don't know we exist. So that's that's one piece that's difficult with this. What about the city council if you came just to open public session? Hmm. All right, three minutes. Somebody in the group can come and say, this is who we are, this is what we're all about. Or Bill could even do set you up for a presentation in September, possibly. Right, well, I also think something would probably work even better on some level is um, there are other clearinghouse agencies, um, uh, Highland Valley Elder Services, for instance. They refer people who are meeting a broad right. sp uh, spectrum, once again, to, of challenges. And they, they either try, they try to set them up for various agencies for the most part that might help them. Um, I, I was kind of curious, have you been hearing complaints? Have you been able, have people we, actually come to that? There is a list of what we've had. So it's on this list? It's, or? On the, it's the five complaints that we've had this week. All right, so you've had, you've had five complaints. To yeah. and, and a lot of those complaints, this is the other challenge I was going to speak of, come from people with mental health issues. Right. And so it's sort of hard to separate the wheat from the chaff and figure out, you know, what's, what's really going on here. And even though there are a number of us who are clinical social workers, that's not our role here. Right. So and, it, it's and do they also come with an, a level of expectation, thinking that your sometimes. word would suddenly correct the whole problem, and, that, and that's probably they, very and, and we've had so. we've had issues where people will come and air their complaints in a public comment period right. in some really inappropriate ways, and I feel really protective of those people that they shouldn't be right. airing some of this stuff to the whole community. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So oh, so it's the privacy issue. Yeah, and we we are we've been working on on how to change that, and we we've got some some good ideas. But at the same time, so it's like we want people to know that they can make these complaints, but we also want to figure out how to deal with the complaints that are appropriate, and also the ones that are not so appropriate. So it's, that's I think. I don't know if you agree. I think that's the most challenging oh, piece I think of our work. It is, and, and it is because what some of what we're doing is really attending. That's a big piece of what we've done in the last few months is attend to the complaint process. We re-energize the staffing. We review the process, the procedures, and try to tighten the response time frames. Of course, those who've been doing it for a while said, well, you know, stick around. It's hard to get enough time in as volunteer people to respond quickly. And it was, so that's the kind of thing. That's really the place where paid staff right. has a role. Are there other, having a consultant. Are there other human rights commissions that you can refer to that might have protocols for complaint filing? You know, it's complaint? interesting. I sent, out a, I sent out a request to the, the list, the Massachusetts list of human rights commissions. I got answers like, when you get that, would you let us know? <laughs> no. 
I mean, I, 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 was I, one in Newton, and it, and, I, and Newton has a paid staff person. Right. I think you're experiencing what was a product of the very best intentions and best aspirations without much of a plan or referral plan on right. how to manage it because yeah. the, you're, you're right, the complaints that you could get, you have to give them all due seriousness and, and respect as you listen to them, but at the same time knowing full well that th they may not be actionable complaints. And then it puts you in a difficult situation. Yes. Also the presentation, as you suggest, can be a little dramatic mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and sometimes that's enough though. Sometimes it's the mere venting or, the, or an opportunity to speak to a panel of authority right. that, that might count to... What really got to, hard, though, is during the public comment period, there might be people from other organizations. Right. And so, so we somebody decides to talk about, you know, their sexual abuse and great graphic detail while somebody is it's, here about a resolution on right. the right to organize. Right. And right. Mm -hmm. So, so we really, for a while, people were just showing up. And we said, okay, three, we're going to mimic the city council. And it's a, a three minute comment. And, and we would ask other people to step out of the room. Yeah. So, so the, there is, is there a process of formal complaint? Yeah, we have a complaint procedure. There's a form uh, that needs to be filled out. And, the, and, the, the, and they fill that out before they come and make their case. Well, we've been rewriting the, the whole thing. Enforced is so, that people were sort of showing up at a quarter of seven saying, I'm here to complain. I, came to the mayor's office at 5, and they said, you're in luck. You can go here talk uh, to somebody to, uh, tonight. Uh, well, so I, well, my question is, no, once you fill out that application, and then they come to you, where do you send them? <clears throat> well, that's a commitment. The commitment then is to hear, to recommend. First of all, the first thing that happens is that the person or the agency against which a complaint is raised the receives a letter. That would be the it's a the app the complaint rather than complaint. application. Okay. When the complaint is filed, then the then there is immediately a response that's sent out from the mayor's office that says, Northampton Housing Authority, we have received the following complaint, mm -hmm. and we would ask that you respond to us within sixty days. Okay. And so meanwhile, then our complaint committee is meeting with the person. How many are on the complaint committee? Letter goes out. Three. How many? Three of us on the complaint committee. Now there are three. Yes, that was one of the places where the turnover hit. Is artists. there an attorney on that, or we don't, we don't have, have an attorney? attorney. No attorney on that. Oh. Although that's not a terrible idea. You know who I was thinking about, Bill, and we approved her with the CDBG. <coughs> Jen. Well, yeah. I mean, well, Jen's already on the planning board. Mm -hmm. Right, but <coughs> she's also under the community legal aid. Right. No, no, I mean, she would be a good resource. Who's that? Right. Jen Derringer. Oh, I know who she yeah. is. Yeah. Right. Um, but we're taking a lot of your time. Can I have yeah. one more question? Sure, please. Before we, um, of course. Now, the housing complaint against parent, owner, or residence. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I was anticipating the next line not taken up by the NHRC. Do you have, do you get a lot of those? We just got that one. Just that one. And we did not take that up. We basically Very good. said. Yeah, this yeah. would be a little bit, yeah. okay. Yeah. So that, okay, that, I'm glad to hear there's only one. You know. Yeah. But that was, that was, that's an example, I think. Yeah. That, that's, that same, we had had more than one complaint filed by that particular individual. And yeah. as well as an application to be on the commission. Mm -hmm. as well, you know, so we get into spots where. Yeah, well, it's indeed. You get the sense of people coming to you and they just vent. That They're some, venting. Yeah, nothing. there is. And I, I per, just because of who I am, I think, and, and who I think the people are who apply for this, we feel like people need the respect of being heard. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're working hard to create a place that, that you know, I, you know, I'm sorry to get dramatic here, but in one case, all I could do for an individual when all was done was give him a hug. Yep. Give her a hug, and that will give you an indication of the complexity of the case. You know, and to just say, we've talked about this, we've thought of options. This is you. You've been hurt. You deserve to be hurt, and we can't do anything but try and give you a hug at least. You know, yep. I mean, how's that for highly professional? Well, you know, what? the passion is fantastic in, in what you're doing. 
so that's you know so so I do see us playing this kind of role that says everybody deserves everybody deserves to be heard and we're well, we're all in a state of confusion I mean, right. our job I is understand. to treat everybody with dignity and respect exactly and my concern is you fill out that application but do people actually think that you're like legal where you're trying we're really we, we, are we spend our time that's one of the things we do is say we aren't the following because there are, you know people will come they think we're a legal agency yeah, they think maybe there's a feeling. maybe there's a, a financial remuneration right. in one case or so you know but sure that's the assumption that that's okay if we explain that I think that's fine with our and right. if we have a process and every time there's a complaint, you know, people spend a fairly good amount of time, personal volunteer time, working on that and taking it seriously. So, and I want to say on the positive side, we have been able to do a few things. There, there yes, have been situations absolutely. where people have been discriminated against on the job. And I see something right here about employee. friendlies. It's yeah. very interesting. You know, it's sort of like. Um, that was a case of a person who said, I, I think I'm speaking for people who aren't going to risk speaking. Right. And it's enough for me that the person got a letter. I know legally nothing can be done, but it's enough for me that there was a letter. You know, so anyhow, that's yeah. well, it's, I mean, tell stories. You know, there actually that puts me in mind of uh, another avenue you might want to pursue which is undocumented restaurant workers in this community. Well, that, that's the, the, a big, that's huge. And, and, but, and it's, you know, just to make your lives even more complicated, very, yeah. very delicate, because the people you want to help, you might end up hurting, but at the same that's time, they're, they're the ones who stand at considerable risk. Well, and, and one of the resolutions that was under consideration is that Emily has brought forward, Emily Andres has brought forward an ordinance having to do with immigration and Right. That's that's the stops. that's the uh, rejection of the federal demand that reporting and, to ICE. Right, and that's very complicated. Yeah. At this point, we've said you know either it has to be a an organized effort with done with enormous amount of care, or we aren't going to take take it forward to the city council until there's something that's really and it probably won't be an ordinance. Yeah, well, I've, I've been working with her on it. I mean, right now it's we've done a resolution on that. Right. And this is an amplification of uh, reporting levels that, it's very, as you said, it's very tricky because some, we cannot tell law enforcement agencies what they can do, what they're mandated right. to do by federal agencies. Right. So, but she's working on it, and, and, I, and she, she's enormously sophisticated. And, and, she's and as a, <laughs> as, and, and she's going to be president. So I, I suspect I, if, if, if only. From, mm -hmm. from well, your mouth to God, the, the revolution. Or the revolution, yes, exactly. <laughs> well, whatever we can do to help, because I think there's there's an opportunity here that's that's still you guys are still struggling to be realized in 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 the best way possible, and I think it's appropriate for us to to help you work towards that goal. And I and and as you said, just merely being a two things, clearing house and sounding board, really serves a purpose. I mean, here is here is a a, uh, a committee that's bestowed with a certain amount of authority, or at least the appearance of authority, and people have an opportunity to speak, and that, you know, speaking to their eternal frustrations, whether they're generated by uh, illness or whether they're generated by actual circumstances, the fact is that there's an avenue and a, and a point, a contact that they can make with, with response. I think that's... The, if you were only that, you'd be great. But you're much more than that. So whatever we can do to help help you realize better. I think connecting us to the youth commission would be great. I'm right. down with that. And That's talking us up wherever you go. Yeah. I do. I, I'm I actually. Uh, we exist. And, I, I hate to say I it. I, I sent two of these complaints to you. I'm <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, I try to. We better, we better be careful. Uh, well, well, I, I, I try very carefully. I'm very careful about parsing them out, though. I, I'll, I'll try and be a bit of a gatekeeper yeah, for you I in that respect. Well, and when you talk about the undocumented immigrant community, yeah. I mean, that's how. Besides the Center for New Americans, there's not a lot of ways right. to access that. I know no, you're right. Yeah. Well, the, the the actually with Jen Ger the group that Ben Jaringer yeah. works for. 
but the fact is, is there's not, and there would be a conversation that would meet some pushback, and probably, I think it'd be a very enlightening conversation for the city to have. I mean, on one hand, we, we, we project values of uh, equality and social justice, and at the same time, we accommodate uh, maybe through igno ch chosen ignorance or genuine ignorance of the fact that, the, that this is a problem that exists in the community. And, you know, the HRC, it'd be, I mean, it would, you would have, clearly, there would be, it would be controversial. I'll leave it at that. And, and, but it would also be educational, to be sure, I think. I think, for sure. Yeah, Before no. you run out, you were the advocate during our deliberation for the block grant for the legal yeah. services yeah. segment. Yeah. yeah. Has that been have you seen any activity in that particular? I'm five minutes late for something. Thank you. Bye, Sarah. Bye, sure. Sarah, thank you very, thank you very much. Thank you for all for your support. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I was kind of curious. Have you had any like requests? Well, let's see. What we've done, uh, well, actually, after a year ago, I sent letters to everybody that we met with yep. and invited them to apply to the commission. And Wanda Rolone joined us yeah. to do that, and Natalia, maybe. I'm not quite sure of where Natalia is. So we've got people. As Are they sending us complaints? No, and it's interesting, at least from Wanda's perspective, is that, that there are resources within housing Right. that people can come to and that there's less, you know, that there are, we're less needed for that than, than they have the roles to play. But what mm -hmm. she's valuable in terms of her perspective on where somebody can go to get yeah. some help if they come to us. And, and, and that, well, that's what I'm getting to. The money that we allocated for the legal aid, for legal services, yeah. Am I I'm really results? trying to say, I'm trying to we tiptoe here. Did, do you, did did do you right think thing? it was really needed? Oh, I do. I'm, I, it's, it's just I my do. question, or, or were there other avenues, were there other uh, sources of, of um, income or, or, or money or revenues for that particular item? If there are, elsewhere? I'm not aware of them. Because I haven't seen it, and that's what I, and I was looking, and I haven't I found haven't any. I haven't seen other avenues, of, I know that they've had huge cutbacks. I know they're trying now. For example, Kitty Callaghan. Yes. Yep, yep. Yes. Commutes from Worcester. It's not because she'd love to be in Worcester. It's that the way legal aid has been shifted mm -hmm. is that there have been consolidations, and these guys are running all over. She um, told me that. You know. She's so wonderful. that's a very good example of why yeah. why okay. I felt so strongly about yeah. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Not just I, 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 I'm looking at not. We don't even know where CDBG is going again next year. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. It's really, I thank you so much for including one of us on that board. That oh. really connects in a way. I've learned so much, and I know Sarah loved it, and I, in a way, I should send a different commissioner every year yeah. because it's such an important educational it is. experience. So Very thank educational. you for asking us to be a well, part thank of you. that. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll get a hold of you. And I'll talk with Steve. Okay. And just to sit down. Just to have some brainstorms. That and the youth commission. Exactly. That's big. And let's just keep an ear out for issues. Mm -hmm. you know, just issues. Um, yep. In the hospice, and there, I thought of the book reading thing that we did that led into yes. this. Because apparently there are uh, moves afoot to talk about um, medication for people at end of life, and that that's a controversial uh -huh. thing. And I'm Suicide is You know, we need a community issue. conversation about that. And I can't quite, haven't quite twisted that into a human rights issue yet, yep. but mm -hmm. there's a human rights issue in there. But so. here we go, because <laughs> even <laughs> even at our advisory um, committee meeting, it was brought up about the suicidal rate. Oh, oh yeah. particularly. Mm -hmm. particularly. So we have yeah. good connections, Mary Carey, right down the line. Do. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. I hope you feel better. Thank you. I'm sure I'm going to bounce more next time. Daniel, come on right up. Bye, Carol. And welcome. Hey, everyone. How are we doing? Good. How are Staying you doing? Cool throughout this. Nice to meet you. 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 Good to see you again. Thank you. Oh, somebody forgot. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, that's right. Run out, Daniel. Yes, I'll be right back.
you go that way? You're out in the parking lot. Go and get it. You're quick. Are you quick? Are you quick, Gene? Oh. <laughs> hey, not, my dry, not at this hour, I'm not. Eugene, it might dry the beer on your pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I lost everybody. Huh? Yep. Time to go. So how's everybody been? Busy? Busy. Busy. Good. Yeah. Busy. Us as well. I always think I'm gonna have a little break, and you see, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a busy Monday morning with. Uh huh. We got that working really good. Oh yeah, I know. I got a call from the police department today too, and I talked with them. So I think our meeting on Thursday with the residents. Hopefully the police department will be there. Board of Health. Hopefully what? they'll get somebody going. Well, I'll talk to you. Oh, yeah. But I can just tell you, I, I called the uh, the company that handles the dumpster and talked to the person in charge. They said it would be rectified by tomorrow. Yeah. We will be there. I'll be out there tomorrow. Okay, I will too. Okay. <laughs> Did they say but, what time? No, they didn't, but they took it seriously. And they were... They were really upset that? with the practice that they didn't do. What are we talking about? Nothing much. <laughs> Anyways, I prefer not doing it because sure. it's, okay. it cuts nothing. To All right. Me. Okay, Daniel, you're going to give us updates on the health director's replacement, and I know there's a problem going on there, and updates on 2012 activities of mm -hmm. the health department, the grants and projects, sure. and updates on the Board of Health actions. Yes. Uh, I do have some. This was actually constructed by Ben Wood. Okay, this okay. is something. And I felt it yeah. would be uh, prudent to give that to you. He did work on it diligently before you left. Right. So, um, and I want to thank Ben, too, because when him and I talked, he said that he was going to help you out. You want yeah. Yes. And he felt that you would be great coming in because I'm not having a director and filling us and giving us an update. Okay. And certainly I can give you an update, and I can start with the, uh, the new director position that is in the process of being reviewed by uh, Human Resources and our board. They're actually conducting uh, interviews tomorrow and on Wednesday. They do have a number of candidates that uh, seem to be appealing to them. So um, they've narrowed the field down, with, I believe, to um, seven applicants. And they had about 15. Oh. So it's moving on. Mm -hmm. okay. But we, we've been good. I've, I originally and still am a health inspector, but I'm acting as an interim director. Mm -hmm. um, with, with the grants and the positions, everything that Ben has done on his end is still continuing. We are uh, still maintaining good relations with individuals and, and involved in grants and uh, public outreach. And also one of the new ones that uh, we do have a uh, FDA grant that we did apply for and received, um, should be receiving about $2,500 from the FDA. And this is in relation to uh, food safety. It's, um, it's a practice that they've uh, at the FDA has instituted uh, nationally for municipalities, specifically the health departments, to improve their uh, standard operating practices in regards to food protection. Mm -hmm. we, um, what we have to do is to be, they have specific standards which they want uh, local um, health departments to improve on. And we chose a standard in which we will develop certain op enhanced operational procedures with our inspectional reports mm -hmm. to really accommodate certain uh, criteria in food safety, specifically um, high risk levels of, of findings. Okay. So that 
when we do inspections, it's not just the floors, walls, and ceilings. It's more in, involved in practices which are um, directly attributable to causing foodborne illness. Food Proper, preparation. Absolutely. Uh, Hot, cold, holding, uh, personal hygiene. So, and we've been doing that all along. I come from a background of food safety, and that's my specialty. I've been doing it for almost 20 years. And um, I've been a health inspector. I've been a uh, food safety consultant and an auditor. And traditionally, um, you know, walls, floors, and sanitary conditions are important, and they do constitute violations. But we're looking at about nine or ten practices that, again, are directly and have been historically known to, to cause incidents of foodborne illness. And these, these behaviors and practices, if they're done improperly, are deemed cr uh, critical, high-risk situations, which, which have to be corrected immediately. Do we have that here? Excuse me? Do we have that right here in the city? Yes, yes. I mean, we, what it is is the, the FDA is saying, Let's, let's draft out a report, a, an inspectional report, <coughs> where the health inspector will, act, will actually look at, always look at these types of things, cross-contamination, <coughs> mm -hmm. for everyone. And, and, you know, first look at these practices because these are the most important things. And so you, you do, you, your priority range, <coughs> you don't walk in and go, you don't look and see that there's some paint chips on on <clears throat> on the baseboard, that's you. That could be a point of noting, but you're more focused on <clears throat> preparation, handling, presentation, Absolutely. storage, Absolutely. and <clears throat> the things that clearly have been shown to cause. Absolutely. And these operational pr and, and productional procedures, if not done correctly, will have will definitely warrant cause. failure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, they've they've been they've been indicative of causing foodborne illness and, and poisoning for for generations. But now the focal point is, yeah, instead of walking into a, uh, a food establishment and seeing, you know, a damage, a hole in the wall, mm -hmm. broken, some broken equipment, yeah, or, they, or, they can be noted, <coughs> you know, but let's get directly into food safety and the heart of the matter. You know, are they wearing gloves, you know? Is, is there cleanliness with individuals? Do they have thermometers to take temperatures? Mm -hmm. Are they keeping foods hot? Are they keeping foods cold? Are they cooking foods to a certain temperature? Mm -hmm. These are the ones that you know, cannot go unnoticed. Are gloves so, so, mandatory? Absolutely they, mandatory. They, they, because I had great concerns when we had the, um, during the summer, we did the food thing. Uh, the restaurant, yes, yeah. thank you. And I was there with a couple of my friends, and we were sitting there, and I actually called them because, yes, I actually saw them handle pizza without no gloves on. I do remember that. Now, gloves are mandatory, but what is mandatory is no bare hand contact. So if you can take a pizza with a lifter or spatula or even deli tissue, that's acceptable. If you're not touching it with your hands. But that was but, with hands. Right. With their, if they are directly t contacting with their hands, that is a violation, clear and direct. But there's ways, in, again, in the systems of, of food production where you don't have to wear gloves, mm -hmm. but you have to use dispensing utensils, other practices to prevent, to prevent your hands touching your food. Right. My girlfriend now, was shocked because she's a nurse at oh, State Medical, and she's yes, like, oh, I said, I and, am. And what, traditionally, what I have found is with this new, with, with this law that was enacted years ago, uh, and it was due to uh, many uh, hepatitis A cases that happened out there, right. and, and we all know that uh, hepatitis A can be transferred from hand to food. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so the state the food protection program said, okay, Gloves, dispensing, but no more bare hand contact. When you think of pizza, they're really, it's, it's hard sometimes to grab a lifter and get it out without contact using you know, gloves on. You gotta put your gloves on. Mm -hmm. Still, we have, in, in respect to that, we have a lot of compliance with it. 80, 90%, but unfortunately, there are some food service establishments here that 
I know of, they'll don their gloves on or start using things when the health inspector comes in or if a complaint. Well, that's in. true. And it's, I've talked to many other health departments uh, in Massachusetts, and it's a constant it challenge. Is. It is. And, you know, getting back into the, the old days of just washing your hands, it, and it was acceptable for many yes. Wash your hands, you know, uh -huh. clean. And, you know, if you don't have a lot of jewelry, you can, you can use your bare hands. You can still use your bare, bare hands for raw product. Prepping kneading bread. Like yes, kneading yes. Exactly. Uh, making a burger pad. Right. You yeah. know, uh, anything that requires thermalization, cooking. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's it. Delicate. But with ready-to-eat foods that require nothing but just hot holding or no other, you know, steps... Yes, you do. You do have to. The twenty five hundred dollars that you, the grant. Yeah. Is that something you applied for, or is that just something that showed up on your doorstep? No, that's something we had to apply for, and it's just not. It's it's, it's something that we have to. We had to fulfill many steps by the FDA, meaning we we had to. Give them a plan of what we're doing. There was nine standards that they put out nationally and said, pick your choice, pick one of these standards. You first have to develop a, a plan, submit it to us, and then you have to follow our protocols and policies of, of what you're going to do. So meaning, we chose to uh, uh, take our inspectional reports and really improve our, our, uh, our, our system of communicating findings onto paper. And I did this in conjunction with the Amherst Health Department, yep. Javeria Amir, she used to work here, yep. Yep. and in a concerted effort that was allowed by the FDA, and they really wanted you know, municipalities to work on this. Mm -hmm. So w we've taken a lot of steps to, uh, to demonstrate what we've done and how we're going to do it. We need a verification audit to, uh, to substantiate that we did this work, and that has to be done this year. So what happens is a, uh, another health inspector from Springfield or Wilbraham or something is going to come in, looks at the standard and say, okay, Daniel, what have you guys done? They sign off on it, we submit it to the FDA, and then... Hmm. Are we up to par with all our inspections? Because you remember, Councilor, yep. that they were behind? They were behind. And when I, when I got here, right. you know... Um, they were really behind us. Way food, behind. And look, we are a food-driven yeah. city. Uh, we, we do have everyone up to the two right. inspections. Per year? Per year. Yeah. Great. And now with, with all of this, this even this FDA grant, the, the way also they, they want it is saying health departments. We, we know you guys are really, you know, you're everywhere. There's so many fronts of public health. You know, you're usually undermanned, underpaid, underpaid. We know that. But we would like for you guys to also, because I should say, the state mandates twice a year for all food establishments. Yes. The FDA says use it uh, on a risk factor basis, high risk, nursing home, the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and then go down to like regular food service establishment. Okay. And then go down to like retail stores that really don't do food service too much, except for some coffee donuts being put out. And they're really saying, those, you know, maybe once a year, at least once a year, but let's work on some of these other places and maybe even go three or four times a year. These are the ones that we really are concerned with, that have been problematic with seeing incidents of foodborne illness. Which, which have, ones are those? Like uh, highly susceptible population. Oh, okay. Specialized care oh, okay. facilities. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, yes. They, these are what, you know, People with a compromised immune system. Yes, that yes, might be yes, yes. Do you find do you, do you consider yourself to be a punitive agency or an educational agency or a combination of both? I mean, the idea. Ed educational. Yeah, the, the idea. You, you're, I hear you saying that your intent is less to go catch somebody and play gotcha and more to to inspire people conformance to the regulations. That's, and then, and that's, then, that's, okay. that's, yes, and that's when uh, I use my. My experience as an auditor and a consultant is working with individuals, letting them know and, 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 and showing them during an inspection 
what is wrong and how we can improve on it. And it's worked very, very well here. Uh, I've seen much great uh, and enhanced co uh, compliance with food establishments because of this. They're, they're really taking food safety seriously. That's good. You know, uh, and, and truthfully, the, those, the bare hand, it is, it is probably one of the biggest ones, but we continue this, yep. you know, and, and surprisingly enough, many forgot that, you know, just using dispensing utensils and things are adequate, and a lot of people got into the habit, they were using single-use gloves, and they wouldn't take them off all day, you know, <laughs> and it's like, change them, but if you're using dispensing tong, uh -huh. You don't need the gloves. Don't wear those taking out trash and, you know, you got to change. Uh, you, but You really do, you wield a pretty big axe. You have quite a bit of authority. Yes, we in do. In this. Yes, we do. And, but it's, it's my experience that in businesses and dealing with local businesses that they like the user-friendly approach. They do. And it is, and it, it is much better it is much to better. be educational than it is um, to be the hammer yeah. out there because... You really don't want them to be afraid of the Board of Health showing up. Matter of fact, I'd like to have them feel as though they would like to have you show up, and maybe you can help us with this. Right. And I think, um, and, I, and I think you get a lot, you get a lot further with it too. We do, we do. We're, we've been successful in building partnerships and yeah. relationships with with uh, the operators. Yeah. You know, we we don't want to go in there with a hammer. I mean, there's times where it's warranted. Yep. Um, but I can tell you, we have we have had such such success with this that we don't have to go for second or third reinspections. And I've been an inspector for many many years, and I've, I've been to many places where they do need second or third, fourth inspections to be in compliance. So the systems are working here. If there are violative conditions which are high risk, yeah. which we talked about. We go back, we work with them to get these corrected. Do we have any high risk here in the city? Well, these high risk, um, high risk factors are the ones that I talked about, like, right. like hot and cold holding or improper cooling. I work with individuals and operators where if, if they have a systematic failure or a deficiency in, in their operational systems, how do we get to the root cause how do we go forward with with doing a proper practice? Yeah. Not not just citing them and saying, "Here you go, I'm going to be back in a week. You need to correct this." Mm -hmm. There's there's a you know I utilize uh, my own background in, in food safety and food production and give them suggestions, mm -hmm. give them you know uh, places to go and look look for ideas and new techniques and things in that nature and. It's been very successful. There's there, a lot of it uh, comes, comes down to a lot of simple things. Really, you know, the refrigeration is always, you know, if they say, goodness, Daniel, you know, I just can't get it down to a certain temperature. Well, why not? You know, is it simple cleaning of your of your equipment? Mm -hmm. Are your door gaskets, you know, do you have any issue? Let's, let's, let's analyze this hol holistically and see, well, if we can get this corrected, you know? Uh, so we do we do work well with the operators and and, and we and we do have um, we do have challenges. I mean uh, this is a busy time of year for us in regards to food safety just if we're off yeah. in regards to temporary events. Yeah. You know, every other weekend we see something. So so on. food comes off of the grill at 145 degrees or whatever it is heated to a whatever temperature. Yeah. And by the time it gets out to the table, is there a is there a percentage of loss of heat or there is, there is. I mean, if if you do an internal temperature for let's say um, chicken, it has to be cooked at 165. Okay? Once it reaches that temperature, you have a certain time to cool that food or serve it. And to serve to serve it realistically is to give it to a, a server and move it out. 20 minutes the most, half an hour. That's a slow. But usually, yeah. you know. Five minutes, three minutes. Yeah. Sometimes it can be from awesome. the grill to the plate, yeah. and then from the plate to the, to the, to the person, and then out to the table. Yep. Five minutes. Or sometimes they'll take that product, they'll cook it, and they want to keep it whole, uh, hot. Yeah. Right. So they, they put it in a steam table, for instance, yep. or a warming unit, mm -hmm. which has to keep it at 140 
and it could it'll sit it could sit there you know all day mm. if it's at the proper temperature. Yeah. You know the quality of the food deteriorates. It's, yeah, deteriorates. Yeah. It does, and, and they they do know that. You know, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes that's it's not. It's more of a quality than a safety thing. Yeah, it's mm. their call. You know? I was just, I'm just curious. I've, I've seen it. Yeah. Do you? Do you uh, is, I'm actually curious about the incidence of of uh, food board illness in Northampton, say, compared to other communities in the state. I mean, do we, we have, do we spike out? Are we higher than most because of the presence of residents? We're very low. We're very low, and and uh, and that would be based on per capita or based on restaurant the presence of restaurants. So, uh, so by and large, that's a, I think a pretty damn good proof. Very that that your yes. your process and 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 also it speaks to the purveyors that you're getting the conformance levels that you're getting. Absolutely, it's, so, it's due diligence. Okay. And, and I've worked in other you know in another municipality where we've and I was analyzing this the other day and thinking about it. We have had since I've been here and since Ben's here, let's we've we've not had an outbreak. Three or more people getting sick. We have not had a confirmed foodborne illness. Suspected, yes. Individuals call, I've eaten something. You know, could it be traced back to the food? We've done our environmental investigations and say, no, it hasn't. You were ill somewhere else, you know, whether you were traveling or, you know, you had a, you had a flu, a family uh, disease, you know. Yeah. Um, any babies lately? Yeah. It could be a number. It, you know, we, we get it. We get concerns sure. in, in individuals, and we more more or less during the winter when the flu is widespread yeah. and other right. other bugs, and people assume it's their last meal. Right. But to, and so you take. So what I'm going to take away from this is that our purveyors are doing a good job, and they seem to be paying attention to what they're doing. Absolutely. And so is our BOH. That's the other important thing. Yes. Our BOH is actually, th this is something that's being done in concert, which is the reason of my question, because, I mean, uh, you know, like any business, if you would, any corners that you could find that you could cut, oh, sure. you can cut down on time, food delivery, and turn over more tables, and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Yeah. There's some shortcuts that, you know, no one's gotten sick, let's just move on. But the Board of Health actually... Uh, not too intrusive is to restrict the ability for restaurants to, to conduct business at the same time doing precisely what you're charged with doing. It, it, I, I'd say that's good. I mean, I wanted to know if there was some way of measuring the effectiveness of this so far. The effectiveness is, I, I think you, um, you hit it right on the head and underscores the, the importance of, of, of just keeping track of incidents. Right. So if we, if, if, if we had a lot of complaints... If we had a lot of confirmed foodborne illnesses, mm -hmm. there would be some loop, some holes in, in our systems, mm -hmm. and we would have to really look at it more directly. But our incidence rate is very, very, very low with the amount of restaurants here. And you think about also in conjunction with the amount of people that come well, that's, I know. Yeah. that's the other important We are a food point. safety yeah. city I mean, and, and a yeah. food food driven city. So I was really impressed with, with that fact. Um, that's great because about four years ago, it was not like that. Yeah. Because, I've heard. Yeah. I've heard. Uh -huh. I've heard. On any given night, the thing is, is we, we our population almost increases by a third on Saturday nights, mm -hmm. third to a, sometimes to a half yes, as much. Yes, absolutely. And it's, it's from people coming here, no reports. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that's great. actually, it's, it's, and it's our bread and butter, so is, to speak. It is, absolutely. Not prepared properly. And the operators really take this seriously. Now, you know, with the weakened economy, I mean, right. they're, they're fighting for, right. for individuals and, you know, getting the best meals out now. And, and food is expensive, and why would you waste it if you, mm -hmm. you know, did something exactly. wrong with it? So all of these variables put together have tremendously um, improved their, their efficacy. And um, the, the operators I, that, that I've worked with, I would say 99.99% .99 are, are really favorable and open to inspections and really want to know truthfully from our health inspector, how can I improve? 
don't nab me for just a hole in the wall that I know, you know. But, be, you know, they really are open to suggestions mm -hmm. and improvements. Another thing I know we br had brought this up a couple of years ago was a lot of people have asked, they like certain restaurants. You go in and you inspect them. And is it up on the website? Is that knowledge there for the public to know who's been cited? Or is that not? We, we are because looking they were at thinking that. Of doing we were that thinking of that. And I, you know, on, on, on my end, it is something that I discussed with Ben, and I will be moving forward this year, um, subsequent to getting a director and getting our team really back and pulled together. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're open to, we are open to discussions, but I was thinking of, do we put it on the website? A lot of municipalities put it on in the, either the paper, they have grading systems. New York City. How do, yeah. yeah. Well, there, there I mean, was, it's. There are associated problems with the grading system because there's there's, absolutely uh, problems. because with any variant in the grade, you suddenly have restaurant owners get very upset. This is open for graft or suggestions yes. of graft and, and bribery to try and get a particular letter grade uh, because it's considered a promotional uh, thing at some level. I, I personally, I wouldn't, if it ain't broke, <laughs> no, it no, is not. You guys have a system that seems to be See, we have a good system. Focus Anyone can yeah. call in, and it's 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 uh, the paperwork downstairs, all the documentation, the findings. I know. I want to eat. Done. You can yeah. come in. We can get your copies. Right, because I want to eat at a place that I know that their kitchen is clean. Yeah. And I was told by one of the board the directors, okay, to stay clear away from a place at one time. I had food poisoning once. I don't ever want it again. <laughs> You know, I agree. I have to. I have okay, to. So I wouldn't want that on anyone. <laughs> and with the grading system, yeah, there could be a lot of elements there of bias and, and associated problems. But certainly put it in put to it in me, the I inspectional think the report. would be the biggest yeah. factor here. Uh, online. So you're right. If you're a concerned individual and you really, uh, you know, you, you really take your health seriously and you're coming in from New York City or Boston, you could go on our website and say, well, we're, we're folks. Here's, here's a restaurant or I'm looking at sushi. But no family like to find out a little hit bit of history here. Because the restaurant is, you know, this is the lifeblood of our city. It is right here. This is really this is what it this is. is what we're all Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's their job to keep up with the culture. Yeah, things get things get sour. The economy. People start to bid things differently, and they bid, yeah. and, and it, it it happens in the food service industry also. Mm -hmm. They start to cut corners here and there. Yeah. Uh, I just had a guy pour a hundred and twenty six thousand dollar foundation in Westfield, and. We court it for our our utility connections, mm -hmm. and I sent this off to Allied Labs, and it was supposed to be a four thousand pound mix, and it came back at twenty five hundred, mm -hmm. which means he must have bought a two thousand pound mix. So anyway, he has torn that foundation out. That it's right? gone. Ouch. Absolutely, it is gone. But that's but that's my job to see that in the iron and to see that everything works out the way. So in your job, but that's easy. Nobody got sick. Well, I don't give a damn. Laps. Well, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> yeah, he's telling you. Right, right, right. But I don't care. But if you get somebody gets sick, that, that's important. Somebody gets physically ill. Exactly. You can die. Uh, and, and, and you get somebody absolutely. with a, a compromised immune system. Be, this could well, be, you know. Well, part of the problem, life or death. Part so. of the problem comes from, as you said, there, there's anecdotal information out there somebody said I got sick eating in such and such a place last night they don't report it they don't follow through point of fact they could just as easily have gotten a bug but the fact is that place has a word-of-mouth condemnation mm -hmm. at that point that's hard to, mm -hmm. to hard to shake I mean we all know the famous uh, Szechuan restaurant issue out yeah. on King Street yes. which deserved or depending on they do so was not mm -hmm. the fact remains that that what killed it wasn't wasn't the Board of Health. No. It was a newspaper story. Yes, yes. that's yes. what it was. Yes. And, yes. and in fact, actually still affects its its ability to function as a business today. Yeah. So and, we, it, 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 and shame on us if we did not have a robust, proficient food safety program in the city. We yeah. are driven by Right. I'm going to this say something about the meat drying on the fence. <laughs> well, well, I heard we spent a lot of time. We spent a lot of time in Southeast Asia oh, and oh, through the Philippines and yeah. things like that, and they all did it. Yeah. 
They put Nobody me, died. They put me on But I'm fence. telling you, they well, dry it. They dry they it out. Dry it? They just yeah. hang it out on the wall. So you may hang it on a stick. Pemmican and uh, yeah, they do uh, jerky. Uh, but, and, and this particular group had brought that with them, like they did at home. That's and, always and a here, challenge. It's they do it all. It, but they also weren't serving that. Mm. That was, as I understood that. I was being dried on the fence, not being served. I don't know if they were served, if, they were, if it was their own consumption. So, and you find, and I do find, but I still don't want that personal I did consumption. I don't hear about that. They're each their own, as long as it's separated right. and segregated. Right. There, there are, uh, you know, there are variations in cultures, and you have a lot in. I eat hamburgers rare, which are not allowed in. See, oh, yeah. you know, some it people. Your dad is gay. I just, <laughs> just live life on the edge. But the yeah. fact is, is that I, we have hers we have a code that doesn't allow it to be done in restaurants. So the fact is, is that 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 um, you're right. You make personal choices, and we don't expect the board of health to come running in. No, no. Uh, at your house. <laughs> right, right. But nonetheless, I mean, you should, you know, factor yeah. in things, and you make a conscientious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Um, Interesting enough, it was the other week we had about 10 to 15 individuals in one week come into our, our department looking for information on, um, on starting a new food service business. Wow. Whoa. I've had everything from a gentleman that wants to run up and down the river on his boat and sell ice cream, to individuals <laughs> selling Hot dog meringue stands. pot. Yep, That's hot. a biggie. Uh, a lot of mobile food inter interest, you know, and then, then we have that vendor policy right. that deters many. I know. But if the week was just filled with food. People are wanting to branch out and explore different endeavors, and more power to them. Exactly. Um, it's really increasing. It is. It, you know? is there we, have, we do have a vendor policy. Now, do you think a hot dog cart in downtown Northampton? <laughs> Is going to interfere with somebody else's business. I, I don't. That's not a position he should be put into. No, exactly. I'm just question. Yeah. Well, actually, the question I would ask you about <laughs> management and oversight of of carts, food trucks, and things like that. That I would imagine expands your, of course, your your inspection repertoire on some level to the point where it's onerous. Or would you have? Would you do you feel confident that you would have the ability to? Um, Inspect systems if the vendor policy were to change, and that the, uh, you would have the manpower to. We we do have the them. manpower. I mean, uh, with now that that deterrent limits us to maybe five or six mobile food units that we have. But they there is really one individual, Frank's Foley's, right? That yeah. sets up the hot dog guy down. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, they get mobile food permits that last for a whole year, where they can go to. Uh, Look Park or the fairgrounds, right. private property, and they don't have to pull a permit with us every time. Okay. They get inspected twice a year. We see them, so they can go to uh, an event without us. Right. So the Italian them. sausage purveyors so, yeah, yeah, at the, the yeah. fair and stuff. Like that. A lot of people take that uh, take that route. But I mean, if, if 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 the vendor requirements were different in Northampton, food truck something did um, were suddenly an allowed use. That would, and so they'd be, we'd see them more often than they'd be. We, would, we would, would. And, you know, there was another Well, who's the guy down here by the Frank. Frank. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's Frank. 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 Yeah, I, 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 st I stop there frequently. He yeah, he's got some good, good stuff. Yes, he does. He does a great job. Yep. He's very he's, clean. He's very diligent. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's, uh, and he, he runs a really tight He does that all yeah. summer there? Yeah, I think. Well, he's, he's off and on. He's, 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 yeah. he's sporadic yeah. with going yeah. out yeah. to Chicopee and uh, yeah. Glendale Road and stuff like that. And, and then, it's simply enough, we have the ding dong cart. What? Have you seen, you know, the orange? Oh, yeah, yeah. the ice cream trucks. Ice cream, simple ice cream, you know. Um, we really had to work with him to improve things yeah. with the truck. And Absolutely. Handling, I imagine his food handling and yeah. we personal, to know him well. personal, right, <laughs> personal practices, uh -huh. you know. He's just, Smoking a cigarette, a cigarette and, <laughs> and um, uh, but anyhow, he has been very cooperative, and yep. I do see him here and there. And he, he's the nice guy, and, and they're yeah, funny yeah, cigarettes too. They're the English geez. ovals or something. There's <laughs> they're the stupid looking package. <laughs> he just yeah yeah. Oh, because they're all cigarettes. Yeah, are stupid. 
But he had a good, uh, a really uh, good idea of you know in trying to get this back, and he just needed some assistance. We worked with him, got him into compliance. So, so. but uh, Daniel, now some of these food trucks are actually fully equipped kitchens. In they respect. are, they are, they, they are cost amazing. Money. Yeah, they, some of these are amazing. Uh, amazing. Big box. Holy smoke! <coughs> at one point, had a, had a full smoke system that was available on their on, on their truck, but they they just went and catered parties. Yes. But if, if something like that equivalent was able to pay for four parking spaces downtown and work a work a you know a food truck. I this is you don't have to answer about what the restaurants would say. I'm pretty sure they'd be pretty ticked off. But I'm just wondering if there's any reason one of the reasons we should consider or not consider <coughs> might be a board of health creating a bigger problem or more work for the board of health to do that they might not be able to manage. No. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you okay. Thank you. Well, we 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 have enough manpower and we would be able to handle that <laughs> We some, would. some of those food, these are these are venues. These are these are attractions yeah. uh, in, in in some instances also. But he, Bill is right about there would be some ticked off purveyors of it. Yes. Yes. We know that we've yes. already we, we, yes. I, um, They're not shy. <laughs> no. Another municipality that I worked for, um, Greenfield, and uh, hot dog cart right in the center of. Town, right by the bank, mm -hmm. everybody was happy. Mm -hmm. Every loved them, and got along with the operators, got along with business businesses, got along with the city. And a city sidewalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's still there. Mm -hmm. It would yes, be a great is. thing if you could walk if you were going somewhere. I like know. I take my lunch, I have to go to AT&T oh, for something. It, it, I can grab a hot dog and wait. And everybody in a minute. It. Everyone went. His name was Jim, mm -hmm. and. When he started, everybody, you know, a couple bucks for a dog, off you run, take care of stuff for lunch. Just a fun guy sure. who get things, you know. And he's still there. He's, and I was an inspector there in, you know, 2002, 2001. And he came with a plan, did everything right, built up a, a pretty good clientele, made, got some great relationships with everybody. Everybody was happy, yeah. you know. And they really wanted him to be there. And, Sure. So I don't and, and you know, you grab a, you, you grab a coke with a dog, and you're off and running. Yeah. Because wasn't there somebody way back who wanted to? Uh, yes, there was. And the number of, remember, uh, they wanted a cart with a hot dog. A number of people have uh, considered doing hot dog or some form of cart sales of food. Because when you were in council, we first started off. Oh, it's been going. That. Yeah, it's been considered for a while, yeah. and the uh, objections have been clear. And, mm -hmm. But as far as the Board of Health or the Department of Health is concerned, that, that, that was my principal concern, just to suss these things out and consider viability when, we, when, it, when and if it ever comes to the point we're debating, at least we don't have to say, well, the Board of Health or the Department of Health does not feel comfortable with the increased amount of uh, we're, we're very investment. We're very comfortable, and we are definitely open to it. Okay. And I, I love seeing the new develop the new carts and some of these mobile units. Right. Uh -huh. They are intense. Yeah. Some of these. And you, you, you are absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's a commercial kitchen. It is. Yes. Yes. Some it's of the money. We just had we had a guy down at uh, by Hugo's that had a trailer, small trailer down. There. He was doing uh, uh, pulled pork, rice and beans. Yeah. Oh, I it was good. Oh, oh it was yeah. fabulous. They make some great stuff. Yeah, they do. It's and a beautiful setup he had. It was really. But, but I, I can tell you that the folks that I've I've been in discussion with, and you know, saying Daniel, I've got these great ideas. Uh, I can make this happen. I've got the capital to to purchase this and this and safety sake, uh, for safety sakes. And once they see that vendor policy, it's like. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'll call you later. Yeah. Why? It's really strict. We have a very exclusionary vendor policy in the city. As a matter of fact, you can't have anything. <laughs> you did go Basically, yeah, you right. You can't have anything, you're not real estate tax on it. <laughs> hey, the thing is, um, the recreation department, they've been trying to get, um, I've been in discussion with the, uh, the director, and uh, I talked to her, and she's, she's been trying to you know, get more, more, uh, Mobile food units and people are interested to go up to uh, the games. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. That's a uh, you know go in Marine. In, in Marine, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and under that vendor policy, if she approves, they pay a certain amount to them, and they get out there and they can. Well, do how does the guy pay. do it over here by the Clarion? He's, he's he's out of the district. He's not in. 
It's very restrictive here downtown. Oh, okay. It's very restrictive downtown, yeah. and also the scope of business. Okay. He's yeah. if you drive by, he's sitting there by himself on Route Five. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of lonely, yeah. but in. But sometimes I, I drove by him the other I've week, and he was and trucks, stuff. and there was a camper there, and people Absolutely. were, yeah, he's got a good product, and he says a lot of people just come, you know, every day. Springfield had solved there. They had a problem when uh, Bay State uh, had expanded down into uh, the extreme north end there, uh, down by ABC Supply, the rail yard. Mm -hmm. They had no place to eat. Right. And they mm -hmm. put a couple of carts yeah. out there. There's, I think there's three of them that are operating down there now. Great food, sausage grinders, stuff like that, um, but they weren't infringing on anybody else. Right, Northampton doesn't have that problem. That's you know, right. You don't come up too short when you're trying to think of a place to eat. No, no, it's, right, it's, it's right, a paradox right. of choice right. for the most yeah. part. It's, the, the problem is getting in and out of a place quickly in Northampton. So mm -hmm. that's that's the trouble. If you had a cart where you could walk by it, and grab a sausage, sausage. grinder or a hot dog, and well, be out yeah. in three minutes. The food carts that are in Los Angeles, New York City, Boston, places like that, the reason they do business is that it's all by it's all foot traffic. Yep. Yes. You can't promote car traffic and it's it's foot traffic and the and the competing interests aren't feeling threatened by their existence. Right. Usually for for a lunchtime business. Yeah. It gets a little more tricky in the in yeah. town here. So and there's politics involved, which is our town. Yeah. So that, well, what about <laughs> so, so again the conclusion is that absolutely that vendor policy, nine out of ten Interested parties, once they see yep. that, they decide to not pursue anything. Else. Hey, pronounce your last name. Washick. Washick. I'll remember that. I know. I was it's a tough one. Times, it's I was trying to figure it out. Washick. I was it. Yeah. I've heard it all. So, um, so again, yes, food safety. It's a busy, busy time of year, but we've got a good grasp on it. Uh, I think uh, we're we're very proud of the systems we've we've. We've set forth, and we, there is still development to to, to work on. Um, How about um, say like our shelters for homeless, and say like across from the Florence Grammar School, we do have. I think it's um, they can come and go as they please. But they have to be in check in at a certain time during the night. To rest home. Yeah. Do you go in and check those out? We do. We do. So check a commercially out. licensed it, kitchen. Yeah. And and the, the the food protection program from the state doesn't want to really discourage these, you know, and really put the hammer down. They yeah. know there is a dire need in many communities for donational practices, but they. What we encourage is, again, good food handling practices. Yeah, I'm just going to say Just don't bring, bring a big roast that's been sitting right. in the sun. Many of the it. residents do the cooking. Yeah. Yeah, and they do. Yes. And they do. And many residents, which is great. That's yeah. part of I their mean, program. But they just need it's to be great. educated. Educate. Yeah. Education. And once <coughs> you learn that, you know, it, it's, yeah. a good, it's a good system. The, the church right here does. Um, well, uh, the, yeah. A couple of churches. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, they're, they're licensed. They get inspected. They have great kitchens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we, we work on different dynamics with them. They come up with questions, but they have very good procedures and, and a lot of enthusiastic people that really yeah. want to sure. help out the community, which is great. It's a win-win. No complaints that yeah. I've received from anyone. So. That's yeah. good. Now, say like with um, our housing authority and so forth, I know that when we had been in here, there was a problem member council. Um, was it one of them with mold or something mold. like that? Yeah, I yep. think I would say that's pretty well settled, correct? Yes. Good, thank God. Okay. And that brings us forth to uh, to other uh, fronts of public health that we are busy with. It's uh, recreational camp. Time, yep, right. Swimming pools uh, and septic swimming. systems. It's park test time, it's installation time. We still... Uh, Work with Amherst on the Title Five inspections, and uh, we well, t see, um, we were swapping hours. We were, I know. Yeah, we we have Ed Smith, our inspector. Okay, yeah. uh, that is part time here, part time in Amherst. The only the only really difference that in Amherst is when they do when when a uh, engineer or a, a, a Title Five inspector goes out to inspect the system previous to selling the home. Yeah, let's say a Title Five inspection has to be done. In Amherst, Ed 
or Javeria there goes out and witnesses the inspection for a fee. We don't do that here. Some they just, used to. Yeah, we don't do that. You know, we could. Many but people have asked how come you know? we're yeah, getting Are you so, getting a lot of pork tests? We not as much, but yeah. a lot of the title, we've had about Title Five inspections, 26, 27 about since the beginning of the year. Yeah. It just increases with, yeah. you know, the nicer weather. Perm tests, of houses. We have an engineer, six, seven. That, an engineer that really actually goes and actually fills out a report. Yeah. And a lot of times, there's nobody from the health department that even comes. Yeah. And, and Which is fine. You have an engineer who puts a stamp on it. Yeah. And that's the way it we look at it. That's the way it has to be. Good. You're stamping it. You're saying. But when we do get the inspection reports, the Title V, yeah. I review them. Yeah. Right? Mostly on myself to make sure everything has been done correctly, and that they're abiding by <sighs> Yeah. You know, good practices, not just saying pass. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It, they have to fulfill all the criteria. Because I know my girlfriend, when she sold her house on West Stanton Road, it was the woman from Amherst that came. Yeah. yeah. Not, 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 and I'm never really so concerned about the actual percolation rate. I'm just concerned about the groundwater elevation is what is my main there, That is. My main but uh, uh, but the again, this per, perk tests, we're always there. When, yeah. when, when they, they dig the holes, the observations, we're yeah. mandated to be there. Well, We've done about six or seven, yeah. but it's that Title V when the engineer right. says either your system's good or bad. Right. Exactly. You know, right. we can, we haven't. I don't. I don't know if they did that in the past. No. What's I, that? The Title V inspection. Well, the Title V is, is relatively new. Yes. Yes. Is relatively yeah, yeah. new. So we we haven't really done that through the board of health at all. Oh. It's an engineer and he writes a report. Yeah. No, he that's says, not he true. Says, You're incorrect. You're incorrect. I'm sorry, Counselor. Okay, when we had a problem with ours, our engineer was there, but the Board of Health from here from Northampton was right at our house on site. Same with Sadowski, same with Nancy Kingsley. They are on site. Okay. Well, no, not a requirement. That's not, not a requirement. But that, required. that does happen. Let's say if I received a Title V inspection sure. report and it says conditionally pass, it's missing information. I, I have the right to call the engineer, homeowner, and say, this wasn't, there's some, there's some problems here. There's some deficiencies. I would like to go out into the field when you conduct this Title V inspection. We're not going to charge you, but we need to verify that you're doing your job correctly. So that's during that. But when there is a perk test, we are, we, we are there all the time. We get the, uh, we get the data collected. Subsequent to that, we get the uh, the drawings, the, the, the design of Everything the system. Everything from the engineer. I have to exactly. review that. There's a charge. Mm -hmm. And then when the system goes in and before it's covered, we have to go out for our final inspection or to ascertain that it has been... The perk tested. test is not just an easy thing either. No, 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 so they were there for hours and yes. hours just with our property. Yeah. Well, if you're there oh, for yes. many hours and... Money. Yeah, good yeah, yeah, if you're out there for too long, <laughs> you know, we, we... Then you do an overnight perk. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. because my husband wanted to make sure yeah. that there was... And, we, and, and we, he didn't care what the price was on yeah. that. Well, now's a good time to perk test. Nice yeah, exactly. Dry. Bone dry. He yeah. wanted Bone to make dry. sure yeah. that yeah. place the house yeah, here can. or there. <laughs> and, 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 and we, we just charge to... Uh, was it, it's $200 for up to three hours. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're going above... If you'd like to... You can dig as many holes as you want. Especially you if you're selling land out. and you want somebody to build a house, you have an option. Yep. Used to be where you didn't have, what happened was some lots were being passed that shouldn't have been passed, and systems failed. Correct. And then it was a requirement for the Board of Health to go out there. Correct. It used to be just an engineer, there was no Board of Health, there was nothing. Yeah. Uh, Correct. They came out, the engineer said, okay, this passes, here's a hundred bucks, uh, it's perfect. But the systems failed, and they failed all over through Belchertown and Bellum. Um, it won't get involved in who, but uh, it happened. Oh, it's, and it's then all of a sudden, like it that. was a requirement. That's what happened with Title V also. Yes. So, you know, sometimes there has to be a little bit of a... Uh, there is. And, and, you know, I'm from Vermont, and I, we built a home in 2002, and it was done just like old school like that. Sure. And it's I agree. Well, I, I, I agree. Think... It should be a requirement when a Title V inspection is done that that a member of the health department be there. But it's not a requirement. The state doesn't require it. No. But 
But some municipalities, again, Amherst, our neighbor, does. Some yeah. other municipalities decide to. Yeah. It's something we can entertain. It's a home rule. You a know, rule. It, it just takes more time. I think force. Title V yeah. is very costly. I think when somebody's septic system fails, just like one of my residents, $27,000, Consular, that's what it cost them to replace that. Yeah. They didn't have that kind of money. Correct. And we had a program that where you would allow that we would loan them money yes. to do yes. that. And that, took, that our yeah, last one was just now? paid off. Yeah. Our last yeah. one was just, it was no. a 15 year no. note. Septic loan yeah. plans. They you, still no, have you it? could still, yeah. you no, could no. deduct it off uh, in Massachusetts off your taxes. Yeah, it was 0%. Deduction. But yeah. I, I can tell you now, Councilor, with, 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 with the economy at its low point, you, 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 I'm seeing engineers not going above and beyond with some of these systems, sure. you know? Oh, and I hate to say it, some, some of these engineers developed this system that yes. is Huge overkill. Over, yeah, $27,000. Wow, my husband and knows who's good and who's not. Yeah. And it's, it's, it it's fully meets Title V, but it's, it's yeah, right. It's like, hey, my first buying a Porsche yeah. just to drive around yeah. town, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. My first house. system was a Huntley system. It was 35 years ago, and it's still still going. Uh, yeah. Just fine. Perfect. That's you treat it good, like you know, like yeah. a just fine. Yep. You know, take, take care, care of it. Take care of it. it. He's smart. Right. We have one on our street five times. That system has failed. Really? Yep. Something. Uh, I'd be investigating big time as an attorney. Yes. Times. That's awful. That is that awful. Is, I know. Well, we we kept you on way beyond. No, no. I know the longevity of a system 20, 30 years. Any other things? No, We've I got... appreciate this update. The only last thing we, we're working on is the disposal of syringes. Yes. We are having another meeting this week with injunction with the DPW. We actually went over to Amherst. They have a system in place we just wanted to see. Does South Hadley have something? South Hadley, too. Yeah. 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 Well, our neighbors, we know them pretty well, so we went over there and we looked at some of these. You know, their, their procedures and how we can implement that. Can you deal with tapestry with the needles and or, or are they still doing that? Yeah, the uh, tapestry is still yeah. Yeah. But this this is all there is now mandated um, restriction on all sharps, all bio that have biomedical um, association, any any sharps. Mm -hmm. So if you're diabetic, mm -hmm. if you're any any use of any syringes at Schooley Dickinson once upon a time put them in a sharps container set yeah. them off the landfill yeah. Yeah. and now now there's stricter regulations and that's what they do at, at, at tapestry they put them in a sharps container yeah. and I don't know if Holyoke has a system because they just started so. the needle yeah. exchange yeah. there yeah. but the um, so it's actually going to be a price that's going to be borne by us for disposal regardless of whether we have a landfill or not no matter even whatever system we contract out for is now going to have to abide by the new state stand it's a state standard yeah, it's a state requirement. It's set forth July. You can no longer take your needles if you're diabetic. It's a, put them in a plastic bottle like they used to tape right. it up. Yeah. Throw it in the trash and the garbage. Now you have to dispose of it in a proper manner. When, when did that come up? Because I just do all those. <laughs> I just threw them all away that I picked up at the dam you're, and you're, in Leeds. You're, you're in violation. You're in vi <laughs> violation. No, People last are still year. doing oh, it. Last year you were fine. Last year you were fine. Just, it month. was just started Yeah, this month. So... We're 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 working diligently to to see if the system you know what what the Department of Health can do, uh, what the DPW can do, what, what collectively how you know Northampton we can deal with this. Because we have two swimming we have two swimming holes well, illegal holes in Leeds. One is the yeah. Chart Pack, yeah. and it's it's it really came to a head uh, in the last few weeks. Dirty diapers. I mean, uh -huh. they, they turned it. It's a family park oh, yeah, now. Yeah, they yeah. drag their play pens down there. Their gas grills. Uh, they set up, they change diapers, they throw the diapers in the woods, they're defecating in the woods, they're cleaning themselves with paper towels, they're leaving that in the woods. Uh, it, it was, I cleaned up at the Country Club Dam, which is actually owned by Wood Park last year. I would, I would go down there every Saturday or Sunday morning at 5.30 with my plastic bag and pick up. I have pictures that's of it all over my that's iPhone. That's, yeah. It was it was a disaster. I I was getting disgusted. And finally, the police uh, notified the police department, and they have been throwing people out. And we've posted it, and they are actually going up to the dam up at Chart Pack four or five times a day. 
and uh, chasing really, people out. The cops are. So they're, they're really doing their job. Why I mean, they're, they're, they post something? It's, well, it's posted, but they don't care. They go down that bike path, the new bike path, they drag their play pens right. and all their yeah, stuff, yeah, and their strollers yeah. and kids, and they set up their boom boxes, and they spend the day there, and they are absolute slobs, and they disrespect that piece of property, uh, and it's owned by a, it's owned by a real estate, uh, a realty uh, oh. holding corporation called the American Real Estate and Something oh. Company, and they're out of New Jersey. <coughs> So you can call them all day long if you're blue in the face, yeah, right. and uh, they just say, well, we posted it. Um, yeah. some, some, I mean, we deal with it. I mean, we're, we have a lot of cases here where just where we're looking at sanitary conditions of homes. Oh, you know, we've got yeah. There's people we, out there that just dump stuff all over the yeah. poor practices. Yep. You yeah. know, and we it, find it's, illegal it's dumping, and we have some hoarding, and we yeah. Always challenges, but that's, you know, we, we tackle them as they come, and yep. we, we want to definitely maintain the maintenance of the city. Dan, yeah. I want to thank you also um, for all the work that you do and the staff, and please let them know I will. that we all on social services and veterans affairs, and I'm also going to talk to the other good. counselors. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Well, thank, thank you for your recognition and your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, guys. Be well. Daniel, okay. take care. Thanks. All righty. Bye-bye. Uh, well, we don't have any public comment. Um, we do not have a meeting for the month of August, and that's it. Uh, no, so I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye.